Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about why cortisol causes weight gain. Uh, so first off, what is cortisol? It is a steroid, steroid hormone, meaning that it is made from cholesterol. Uh, it's also a glucocorticoid hormone. So that term gluco refers to the fact that it acts on our glucose metabolism and corticoid, meaning that it's secreted by the adrenal cortex. Uh, importantly, cortisol is a stress hormone and it acts on nearly every system of the body. So it has a lot of effects body wide. Um, so the acute effects of cortisol, so in the short term, when we're only secreting cortisol for a short time during a stress response, these are the effects. So cortisol provides energy to support the fight or flight response. So that's what we mean by stress response. Um, so in its effort to do that, in its effort to provide energy to continue the fight or flight response, it has all sorts of actions throughout the body. So it increases rate of protein breakdown, which in the short term is fine, but if we have chronic release of cortisol, then that will cause us to break down muscle tissue in the ongoing <laughs> for an ongoing period of time in the long run, which is really a problem. It also causes gluconeogenesis, meaning formation of new glucose from other substances like amino acids and uh, fatty acids and other substances. It stimulates breakdown of triglycerides, so fat in adipose tissue, fat tissue. It also decreases insulin secretion. Um, so insulin causes the take up and storage of fuel, but the goal of cortisol is to release and circulate fuel of a variety of different types. So it decreases insulin secretion and increases glucagon, which is the opposite hormone that causes production and release of fuel. So we have circulation of fuel and availability of fuel instead of storing it away for later. So that's what happens in the stress response acutely when we secrete cortisol. Uh, also, there are immune effects of cortisol. So cortisol inhibits lots of different aspects of the immune system. Uh, if you think about it, if we're in a fight or flight situation, so we're faced with a bear that we need to decide if we're going to fight that bear or run for our lives, uh, we don't have time for the immune system. The immune system is not very helpful in that emergency situation. So cortisol suppresses many different functions of the immune system so that we're prioritizing our resources and our energy to be able to deal with this emergency or deal with this immediate situation. So it inhibits all sorts of different elements that participate in inflammation, which in the immediate is helpful because it decreases pain and inflammation. So we're not distracted when we're fighting a bear. We're not distracted by the pain and inflammation of whatever is happening to us in this fight with the bear. Um, but the problem is if we're not fighting a bear, now it's interfering with inflammation, which is a good thing. We need inflammation when we're injured because it helps us with tissue repair and blood clotting. And we send white blood cells to the area to fight against infection. So inflammation is a normal, healthy response to an injury. And we're suppressing that during that fight or flight situation. Uh, also suppresses T cells and B cells and antibody production and all sorts of different aspects of our immune function, because those are not priorities when we are in the middle of fighting a bear or running for our lives. So in the immediate, not a big deal, but if this is chronic and it's going on for a long time, then we are going to chronically have a suppressed immune system. And that's really going to be a problem. Uh, so chronically, why does chronic cortisol cause weight gain specifically? So if you consider that the main role of cortisol in the fight or flight response is to provide energy to support that response, it makes sense that cortisol is also going to stimulate appetite. So it's going to make you want to eat more because cortisol is trying to get you more energy, meaning more calories to support whatever you have to do, whether you're running or fighting or whatever you need to do. So it increases appetite and it specifically increases appetite for high energy foods, things like sweets and fatty foods and things that have a high salt content. So, of course, if you're giving in to that increased appetite and giving in to those cravings, then it makes sense that it would cause weight gain. 
Uh, in addition to the increased appetite and cravings, it also messes around with a bunch of our other hormones. Um, so our testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone, those are all also steroid hormones. So all four, cortisol and these other three hormones are all steroid hormones, meaning that they're all made from cholesterol which means that they're all also competing for resources when it comes to producing these hormones because they're all made from the same basic substrates. So it makes sense that if we have high cortisol, that it would mess around with or interfere with our production of these other uh, steroid hormones. Specifically, high cortisol can lead to low testosterone. Um, so in men with low testosterone, it can lead to weight gain, especially around the midsection, and also makes losing weight very difficult. Um, it also, when we have low testosterone, that can lead to decreased muscle mass. And when we lose muscle mass, we're also lowering metabolism, which can lead to fat gain if you're still consuming the same amount of food, even with less muscle mass. Uh, and women, estrogen and progesterone tend to be more of the issue than testosterone. Um, interestingly, high cortisol can lead to either high or low estrogen production. And in either case, both extremes cause weight gain, especially around the midsection. Estrogen regulates glucose and lipid metabolism among its many other functions. So we don't want to mess around with our estrogen balance because that messes around with our ability to uh, properly metabolize and do what we should be doing with glucose and lipids, meaning fats. And then finally, high cortisol also can lead to low progesterone, another female hormone. Um, now, progesterone is a precursor for cortisol, meaning that we need progesterone to make cortisol. So if we're making tons of cortisol for an ongoing period of time, then that depletes our ability to have progesterone in circulation because we're converting it all into cortisol, essentially. So low progesterone can lead to irregular menstrual cycle and other reproductive challenges. It also can cause headaches and mood changes. And another issue when we have low progesterone is that even if our estrogen levels are normal, it would lead to estrogen dominance because we need a balance between estrogen and progesterone. So low progesterone, even if estrogen is normal, would cause estrogen dominance, which also leads to weight gain and all sorts of other symptoms that go along with estrogen dominance. So collectively, in the immediate time, cortisol could potentially actually cause weight loss because it's mobilizing our resources. But in the long term, because of its effect on appetite and our other steroid hormones, uh, it, it does cause weight gain. So even if you don't give in to your increased appetite and uh, cravings, it still can lead to weight gain because of how it affects our other hormones, among the other effects of these imbalanced hormones. Here, we're just talking about weight gain, um, but there's other effects like loss of libido and all sorts of other problems that go along with it. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.